Welcome to my channel. My name is Brian Kafeke and I'm a Data and AI Solutions Enabler, also known as a consultant. And I'm going to talk about something really important. You may not even realize just how important this is. You may not have hit this problem yet, but if you work in the cloud, and particularly if you work with Azure, you're going to hit this sooner or later. So stick with me as I talk about Azure resource limits and when Azure will not let you provision a new resource, no matter what you do. And I'm going to talk about how to fix it. So let's jump in. Now, in particular, I hit this problem with Databricks. I was trying to do yet another training video on Databricks, and I couldn't provision a cluster. And I'll talk about that in a minute and how I got it. But this can happen anywhere where you're trying to create maybe a VM, you want to get blob storage, anything you want to create in Azure, there are limits around you. And when you hit them, it just puts up a wall and says you can't create it. So you get this error and you stopped. Before I jump into the details of fixing it, it seems a bit frustrating, so I had to step back myself and say, why does this happen? Why? What is going on here? And it reminded me of back in the day, I used to work in an electric utility, and the electric utility had something called peak usage demand. And the entire electrical system is really designed around that peak demand. They have to have the capacity to support the highest demand possible, which is why you pay more money if you use electric, electricity during peak usage hours, and you'll see it on your bill typically. Now, why do they do that? Because they need to support the demand. And typically in the electrical company, if everybody on a Monday morning, it's a hot summer's day, everybody goes into work and they turn on all the air conditioners and people are using microwaves. And by the way, they probably forgot to turn these things off at home. Suddenly there's a massive surge in electrical demand. And if the electrical system can't handle it, it can fail and everybody loses power and things like that. In a similar way, I think Microsoft is trying to, and I'm only, this is guessing, I haven't talked to them, but I'm try, I think they're trying to just manage their resources so that they can support customer demand as needed and can estimate and then plan for it. So these quotas that we'll talk about are a way that they govern this so that they don't have suddenly a massive spike in demand they can't support. So let me pop out of here for a minute. I'm going to jump in and show you what happened to me. So I'm looking, right now I'm in the Databricks portal within Azure. So from Azure, you come in here and I have a Databricks workspace. Now my particular error happened when I tried to provision a cluster. You can see here, I'm provisioning a cluster and it doesn't matter if you're familiar with Databricks and things, that's really not relevant. Uh, I, but just to give you some background, Databricks is a user interface wrapped around Spark. Spark is a scale out environment where you have a sort of master process that runs in parallel data engineering tasks essentially and or machine learning and by scaling out to multiple machines and multiple processors it can perform you know big data type operations so typically it's going to be very high capacity and you need a lot of resources interestingly you don't get any special allowance for that in your quotas that when you're using Databricks uh, from your subscription so even though I provisioned uh, Databricks workspace and the logical thing in there is you're going to want a lot of resources because this is big data. It doesn't make any change for that. So you're going to have to make sure you take these steps if you're using Databricks. So you make sure you have enough um, bandwidth essentially on your subscription to do what you need to do. So you can see here, uh, I'm looking for the minimal capacity. This is like the smallest possible VM I could ask for. 14 gigabyte of memory and four CPU, four core. Now, they say vCPU because in the cloud, everything's virtual. So, so are the CPUs, vCPU. I'm asking for a minimum. You can set a min-max based on demand. So I'm saying, just give me one. I'll be happy just to get that four CPU. I was trying to be very minimal here. I was having some issues already, and I didn't want to run into issues or problems. Uh, and it wouldn't give it to me. So let's go back to the error. And if I go in here, I can see this large descriptive uh, error message. Now, one of the reasons I've never resolved this in the past is because my eyes aren't that great to reach something that small. So typically I've just said, okay, let me just, I knew it was give me a resource issue, uh, but I usually worked around it and didn't bother expanding the capacity. But this day I needed that capacity. So let me show you that error message more closely. So here we're looking at that same message, but larger so we can see what's going on. Right at the beginning, it tells you the cloud provider failure cloud provider launch failure and it tells you that this was encountered but I want to focus specifically on 
the message. So the message is the operation could not be completed as a result in exceeding approved total regional cores quota. That's a Microsoft um, edict on your light your subscriptions. This is what they're selling you. You get. You can change it, and different subscriptions have different value settings there, but you have to be aware of it. Additional details. This is where you get, this is really telling you, this is a great message because it's telling you exactly the problem, which is nice. Resource Manager, I'll back up a minute. Resource Manager is the Azure service. It's a shared service that anybody or anything that wants to acquire Azure resources, in other words, provision new resources, must go through this service called Azure Resource Manager. And it's an, it will look at your subscription limits, et cetera, and quotas and say no or yay. Now, if you may be using an older version of of Azure, you may be under subscriptions. Go back to the classic days, they call it now. I'm not going to talk about that. Some slight differences, but the same thing applies only in those cases, it would say classic or some other wording. Uh, but anything for the last few years is using Resource Manager. All right, so Resource Manager is the service. The location, East US. Now that's important because this is regional based. Okay, regions have a lot to do with this. I'm in the Eastern United States, the Boston area, right? So in the Eastern United States, we have East US and East US 2. So I have two regions, and if I split my resources up between those regions, I can avoid hitting these limits. The current limit for just one region, East US 2, where I am, is 10. It says your current usage is 8. Now, at first, I wasn't sure why I was using 8, but then I remembered, oh, yeah, I have my other Databricks workspace, a separate one, and I have a cluster in there, minimal, and it's apparently using uh, two v, you know, eight vCPUs. So that's my 8. I want four more. Well, you see the limit does the math says you want 12. I can't give it to you. So submit a request to the get a quarter increase and it gives you a link, right? And call another attention. There's this other link. The request that they're saying is essentially a help desk ticket to Microsoft. So it is a little surprising to me. This is a manual process. Now to Microsoft's credit, they got back to me within a couple hours and said you got your new resource limits and that's great. Um, I would love to see something a little more automated, but, um, but it worked pretty well. And Anyway, that's what I did. So let me take one more step here. So the bottom link here is what you saw in the bottom of that message. I'm going to go here first, though. This is a really nice link because if you follow this link, and I'll post it in the comments below, you can go through here and you can see it talks a lot about all these different resource constraints and limits. And you can see what's really interesting to me was I didn't realize like everything is restricted one way or another. If you're using free services, also be aware those have constraints as well. But the subscriptions is very key to this whole thing. What type of subscriptions, etc. All right, so you can see all these things, uh, management locks, etc. Everything has a limit somewhere. Now I'm hitting a vCPU limit. Let me go back here again. I'm going to go to the other link. This is the one that is a nice link because it walks you through. This is what you need to do to request an increase. It's a really good link. As I said, I'll post it, follow it, and it'll walk you through the steps. Now, one of the things that can be challenging in this is knowing. Now, my particular use case was good. It's another reason why I don't mind videoing it, because uh, it's pretty easy to figure out it's vCPU. I'm not sure that everywhere in every case you're going to find it so easy to find out what it isn't giving you the permission to provision. Uh, but do remember, it tends to be regional based and it's related to your subscription. And we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, I am using a pay as you go subscription and it's telling me right here right at the top like yeah you've got a restriction on your standard vCPU quota okay uh, and then it tells me more the standard vCPU quota uh, for pay as you go is reserve which machine instance and it's enforced at two tiers and the first is region so the first tier is regional and it's across all VM series the second is on a per VM series so it's it's not only do I have so many CPU limits but there's a skew of different types of virtual machines. Within those skews, there's also different limits. So I might be getting a limit because I'm asking for a certain type of virtual machine, and in that I've exhausted my capacity. But in another skew, I might not. So that's kind of interesting. It goes through these steps. So I just wanted to walk through that for a minute. Now that I know that, let me step over here for a minute. What we have now is an issue with the subscription. So let me go here for a minute and I'll walk through the process of figuring out what's going on. You can see I have subscriptions pinned to my dashboard, but just to help you out here, I want to show you a couple of shortcuts that you may not be familiar with the Azure portal. 
I have a video about navigating and getting around the Azure portal. I highly recommend you get comfortable in the portal if you're going to be using Azure. It, it, it's easy to kind of forget. I'll just get by. But this is something you're going to use a lot. It's a great resource. And if you don't know how to leverage the portal correctly, you can make work hard for yourself. So be like me. I'm lazy. I want things to be as easy as possible. All right. So what you can do is I need to go to my subscription. Let's assume I can't see it here. I'm going to go to subs my services, all services here. And you can see here I started typing subscriptions, right? And now I can see them. So this is a general service. It's not my subscription so much as subscriptions in general that I have. I can go here. Now I might want it to appear over here in favorites. So when I highlight it, I just have to click the star. That will add it to my favorites. Now one of the things I can also do is I can manage move things around. For instance, if I want virtual machines, I actually wouldn't mind having them. Let's see, I can drag my virtual machines here. And move it around so now I can have things that I want to use frequently listed quick yeah you know, right under my favorite so that's really handy now when I go into subscription something else I can do is I tend to not work off the left panel I tend to use these things when I want to create new resources I tend to use my dashboard to work with things I've already provisioned so in a case like this I could go in here and just say pin and that will pin my subs all the subscriptions to the dashboard including if I want to create a new one. So I'm going to go in here into my dashboard and I have it pinned here. I have pay as you go pinned right here. So I'm going to go into subscriptions and then I'm going to go into pay and you go and we're going to kind of explore this a bit to see how we can solve our resource constraint issue. So let's click on this. Okay. Now what we have is we're on the pay as you go usage and quotas. So you go into the page, you go whatever subscription you're using that you got the error on, go to usage and quotas. Now you've got a thing to filter. There can be a lot of things going on. So you can say, what type of service quotas do you want to look at? You can go through here, provider. I'll say, I want to see all providers and that's fine. Or I could filter by typing in here what I want or just clicking it. All locations. Now, because I don't have anything in other locations, it's pretty good about just restricting it to what I have, which is great. And it says only items with usage. So see that there. But I can change that to say show everything, whether or not there's usage. And then I can see, and that can be useful because if you notice on the right, it says things like four of 250. So it's actually telling me what the different limits are. Now, I'm getting a lot of locations I don't ever use because I've said show all. So here I might want to just get rid of select all and just say, I just want to see east US and now I can just see that and I can see okay these are the things I'm using now I'm not actually currently allocated for a cluster I don't have one provision so I'm not seeing this issue and I don't see it showing up here but if I did it will show up there so here's where I can you know go around and get a sense of what's going on and when I'm ready and I know what it is I need to in my case I know it's vCPUs it's pretty clear I can go and click this link here uh, I gave you that over here earlier that uh, covers how to do this, but I'll just walk through it. I can go in here and say request, new support request. I'm entering a help desk ticket basically. So I'm coming in here and say, what's the issue? Now it already knows subservice and subscription limits, quotas. My subscription is defaulting here. And then I just go in here and say quota type. Uh, I can go in here and what I'm gonna say is, notice there's so many different things, but I know it's V CPU, so I can just stop typing next solutions and from here I can go in now and finish what I want now the first thing I need to do is give it details so it's saying okay deployment model as I mentioned it could be classic unlikely hopefully you're not using classic I recommend if you can get away from that you should because that's really deprecated as far as I know and it's a very older less flexible model when you use resource groups and things they work with the resource manager uh, okay, so I've got that, and now it says locations, and I've got all these things. So I'll say just for East US, but I could do East US too. Uh, let me click away, and that's all set. Now I want to say types, standard or spot. It's standard instances, standard VMs. Spot are ones that I believe are just available in a pool, and you can grab when you want. They're already pre-allocated. And now it says what series do you want? Now the one I had was a, a D series, I believe. So. This can be a little tricky because if you go to the cluster, I just want to show something. It says it's a DS3 V2. So I'm not sure what the DS is. It doesn't show up the VMs. It occurred to me it might be like a data science VM it's referring to. I'm not that familiar with the SKUs. 
Uh, but when I go in here, I don't see the DS2, but I do see like DSV2. So you can do that. I can say DSV2, DSV3, check off whatever I want the increase for. And then I have to tell it, it shows you what you have. Now I can say in here, I really want 40 here. And you type in the new amounts, you want 40, uh, 40 type thing. And then save and continue. And I'm not going to go through this whole process, but you save and continue and eventually you submit it. And when you submit it, I'll show a picture later, but it has the little, this little bell icon will pop a message up saying you've submitted a request and it's submitting it for you. And I asked for it to use email because I'm not in a rush. It's uh, back there, but you also had priority settings. So if you're an enterprise customer and you have uh, the support, you could set it up as critical priority and things like that. I'm just doing this for training purposes, so I didn't want to do that. So that's the process just to give you a feel for what you're doing. You're creating essentially a ticket, goes into Microsoft's help desk system. They'll look at it, they'll triage it, they'll solve your problem, get back to you. Generally, they 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 want to give you the resources, so I don't I can't think of a reason they wouldn't unless you ask for something extraordinarily high and they might wonder what's going on. All right. So let me close that. And if I go back to my subscriptions, I'm using these breadcrumbs here. I'm going to go back to subscriptions. Okay. So one of the things I wanted to show you also is a problem you can run into is that you have, remember I mentioned resource manager is a service that is the guardian of all Azure resources, except what's under classic, <laughs> so that's the exception. But that's the guardian. In order to think of, I kind of think of it like a, if you have a stockbroker, before you can work with that stockbroker, they're going to say, we have to register you as a customer and create a, an account for you. In a similar way, you need to register things that will request resources called providers. So you can get an error if for some reason you have some provider that isn't registered. Now, as far as I can tell, I haven't hit this. I think most, especially anything uh, created through the portal, seems to automatically register resource. So if I look here, um, you know, Databricks is registered, et cetera. But you can see all these different things are. But then you do have things. Suppose I was trying to do ADD, right, AAD. I would have to click on it and then say register it. So you can get potentially an error if you've got a, an unregistered service trying to ask for something. I'm guessing maybe REST APIs would really hit that because maybe something's not set up right. So just be aware of that. Things have to be registered. The other thing I wanted to show you is that in the subscription, you can also go to the activity log. Now the activity log for the subscription shows you all the things going on. So you should be able to find where the error happened, track it down, and you may get more information looking at the activity log. So this is separate from, you know, going into the visual analytics monitor and all that stuff. And you can just see specifically like what's going on here. So that's another place to kind of take a look for things. So logging is important and you get a lot of tools in here so it's good to get familiar I'm a bad person in this regard I tend to look at a subscription as sort of just yeah get it out of the way it's like I got my cable subscription or I got my Netflix thing I just want it to work but the subscription really has a lot of influence over your use in Azure so it's good to get familiar with how it works and with even if you're not really an IaaS kind of person I tend to use you know platform as a service I just use things and it takes care of the resources you do need to know a fair amount about the IaaS stuff too because underneath the covers, it's going to be using VMs and, and storage, etc. All right, I think I've covered all the things there. So let me walk through my riveting slides. I know you're glued to these. So a couple of things I did want to look at when I was scaling, searching through like what could be causing a problem. I also noticed that like, you may see other things that could be causing a problem. In my case, scale out is the methodology or the architecture used by something like Spark to acquire more resources. So it occurred to me, maybe it's a scale out limitation. You can see here, like I found, I cut and pasted it here, but there's a limit with scale out. I don't think Databricks actually is tied into this. This may relate more to something like Azure Data Warehouse, AKA Synapse, or it may relate to things like um, 
using HD Insight. I'm not sure where you might hit this, but you can look at the details. But just be aware it may be coming from other areas. The other thing I thought was interesting is this note about virtual machine cores have regional total limits. So this tells you a lot about it. It talks about the DV2 and different types. So it's interesting because the other part that's a little tricky is you have to kind of have a sense of what virtual machine types you're trying to get. And when you're using paths, it's not always that obvious. Now, danger, danger Will Robinson. I'm using a flashback, goes way back, probably dating myself here, but way back in a long time ago, I'll say it with my father that watched the show, but a long time ago there was a show that was called Lost in Space, and it was a little spaceship that a family went around called the Robinsons, and they had this cool robot. It was, it's still like this robot, it had these weird stretchy arms, and it rolled on rollers, and it had, it would talk and warn the child, Will Robinson, danger, danger, anytime anything came up that it was always right. It was always a danger. Um, and I want to talk about what are the dangers and why you really need to be careful when you're using, uh, when you're provisioning resources and what you can have problems with. So um, I tend to do training. I tend to do a lot of presentations. Trainers beware. If you're an MCT, if you're an Azure technical trainer, if you're anyone out there that's doing training, you should be aware of these things, especially if you're having students come in and they're going to use their own, they're bringing their own license, they're bringing their own subscription. Now the Azure trial subscriptions have limits and I've hit problems with those usually because the students in a class had already opened it up maybe a week or two earlier for other things and they've already provisioned resources on that subscription and suddenly in Databricks it says you have no capacity because you saw it wants quite a bit. Uh, as soon as I do one thing I was already using eight vCPUs. So that can cause trouble. So if you're going to do a class, if you can try to find out what subscription students are going to be using. If you could give them a subscription, I don't know if there's available ones or whatever. Sometimes Microsoft people can get pre-allocated, but be aware of those limits because you don't want to be in the class and suddenly find out you don't have the, uh, the quotas available to create more resources because it's too late at that point. By the time you get a, a ticket in and Microsoft fixes it, the whole day or half the day could be gone. Similarly, if you're doing a presentation, you yourself should make sure you can create the resources you need. Had I been doing a, a presentation on Databricks, I would have hit that error. And now I'm wasting time in a presentation, which is probably all of 40 minutes trying to solve that. So test it before. I typically do test before, but definitely test this piece out. Probably more important than both of those, but I don't do as much of this as I do the other two. But uh, production deployments, critical things like production deployments, make sure that your license now very often you might be using a test license and then maybe even a QA license of subscription and when you get to another subscription for deployment make sure that license where you're going to deploy the production system or major enhancements has the quota available to it because if it doesn't it could be a really bad thing because now you have this critical system management's breathing down your neck dates have been established and expectations are high and suddenly you get this silly you can't create a VM error or you've got too much storage capacity, you know, you're exceeding capacity in some way. Don't want to have that happen. Similarly, be aware that you have to allow, just like the electric company, you have to allow for excess capacity. Maybe when you deployed the system, you had enough capacity. It was great. And you're going along great. But then all of a sudden, uh, it's maybe a data centric system like an Azure SQL database or something. Suddenly it needs more space or more CPUs than it can handle. And it can't give them to you because there's quota limits. So a lot of these things, you know, they advertise we can automatically scale, but if you don't have the quota available, then it's going to still cap you. So be really careful on those things. Review your quotas, check your stuff, make sure things will you'll work. A bad, a, not a bad idea might be do a pre-deployment where people can't get at it and make sure everything works and then delete it all and start again. But watch out for that. Now, I just wanted, again, go to the activity log, kind of highlighting this. If you go to your subscription, go to the activity log, you can find notes here and you can see in my case where I got the error failed below it actually was there and when you do the request I just want to show this cute little message here but uh, if you look at the bell under the bell it will pop up a message we created the support request quota request for compute so that's when I actually did do it so let's do a little review and see if you remember everything we covered because there isn't a test but you will hit the real test, which is life. <laughs> so let's go. Subscriptions have a def have default resource limits. Doesn't matter what kind of subscription. You have some sort of limits, and they tend to be focused also on regions. So be careful. Be aware. Know your limits. 
Reserved instances. I haven't talked about these, but this is probably Microsoft's biggest answer to this problem, which is with enterprise customers, larger customers, Microsoft really likes to negotiate with them during the sales process and say, how many VMs, how much memory, how much space do you need? But in particular, virtual machines, how many will you need? And they kind of work this out and they say, we need a thousand. Okay. Pay for the thousand. You're going to reserve them for you. You own them. They're yours. You've like It's like you've rented out the whole hotel for the day. You own them. It's yours. And you're going to pay for that. But because you pre-allocated them, they're reserved for you. That's why they call them reserved instances. We'll give you a big discount. Sometimes it can be really steep discounts. Uh, so it pays for the customer to do reserved instances. And it pays Microsoft because now they can plan capacity better and make sure it's available and meet SLAs and all those good things. The only downside is customers that do reserved instances make sure you know what you're doing and you're planning correctly don't just grab you know a million dollars worth or ten million dollars worth of reserved instances if you don't know you're going to really use them because i have seen that a lot with customers they got by all this capacity and then their plans change and they other priorities take place and they let capacity run off and they really never used it so that's a sad situation give me the capacity i'll use it <laughs> anyway uh to increase the limit you submit a request through the Azure portal, go into your subscription, go into usage and quotas, the usage and quotas blade, and there you got through the whole steps. And the steps are outlined in that link. And it's again going to be in the comments. PaaS services, this may, this is uh, something that if you don't do IaaS, you do PaaS or SaaS, you may not be aware, but of course PaaS services, I talk a lot about that, like Databricks, like Azure SQL. Those PaaS services also are included in these limits, and you may not be aware of this, the kind of things that's being created behind the scenes. So this can really make it more confusing. And I talked a little bit about some tools you can use to track things down. Look at the usage and limits uh, within your subscription. Look at the activity log, et cetera. You've got some places you can search, and also links and things online. And if you have Premier support or other types of support, you can also reach out directly to Microsoft if it's critical and you need help. So I hope you like this video. I hope you're riveted by this content. But more importantly, I hope you find it valuable. I believe everyone who uses Azure sooner or later is going to hit this problem. So please like, share, comments. Hope you like it. And again, um, get the word out that I'm here and doing these training videos. Have a good day. Thank you.